today. I want to talk about our amazing God. Turn with me to the gospel recorded by Luke chapter number 15. And I'm going to begin to read it to your hearing at verse number 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said unto the father, Father, give me the portion of goods that follows me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance on riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. He came to himself, he said, How many high servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with mine. I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am not no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me one of your higher servants. The scripture I read into your hearing is a very familiar parable. And most of us have probably heard it in Sunday school or in vacation Bible school. Whichever venue it was, we all heard it when we were very young. So I thought it appropriate to look at this particular parable on this family friend day, since it concentrates on a family and some of its family issues. The parable of the prodigal son is the story of a son who leaves his father's house only to come back and be greeted with open arms. Now, they, they, they taught us in seminary that when you look at a parable, to find out what Jesus was really teaching about, you had to look at at least three things. Number one, the context of the parable. What was going on at the time? Number two, the characters in the parable. And number three, what's strange and unusual about the parable. Now the context for this parable is Jesus having dinner with what the Pharisees saw as the wrong group of people. He was dining with sinners. He was dining with people who were not religious people who did not come up to their standards and to their expectations. The Pharisees were saying, now how can you dine and associate with people who fall outside of the law of God? And in an effort to arrest their concerns, uh, Jesus gives them one parable containing three acts. Now, num num number one, number one, number one was the shepherd who lost his sheep. That's act one. And the woman who lost her coin, that's act two. And the father who lost his son, that's act three. What Jesus is trying to get them to see is the extent that someone would go to to retrieve something that they consider valid. valid. This sermon, this sermon was solidified in a conversation I had with Sister Dora Evans on Friday. She called to offer me encouragement because little OB tested positive for COVID-19. No, no, one had, no one had to tell her. She, she, she knew I was going to be tore up from the floor because our baby was sick. And she stopped and took time out of her schedule, out of her day, and called to encourage her pastor. And during that conversation, I, I was sharing with her that not only was I concerned about little OB, but that I was worried about big OB and mom. Because the baby is only seven months old and could not take care of himself because he was only seven months old. He couldn't feed himself. He can't change his own diapers. 
He, he can't take his own temperature or wash himself. Everything has to be done for him because he's seven months old. And since everything has to be done for him, his parents, his mother and his father, had to quarantine with him. And they had to touch him and breathe the same air that he breathed. They had to run the risk of being infected themselves because he tested positive for a highly contagious virus. Uh -huh. And Sister Dora said, that's what parents do. Uh -huh. My, my, my. Amen. And that statement, that's what parents do, sealed it for me. Yes. With those four words, I knew that this was the text that I had to preach from on Family and Friends Day. Right. Because in this parable, Jesus teaches about the lengths that a person will go to to retrieve something that is valuable to them. Yes. <clears throat> next, 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 next is, is, is the characters in the text. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Whenever Jesus uses a parable, the characters in the parable, parable metaphorically represent someone in the text. In the parable of the prodigal son, the father represents God, our father. Yes. The brother who stands outside angry represents the Pharisee. Because there's always somebody who doesn't want to see a sinner come back to God. Uh, that, that, that raises the question then, who does the prodigal son represent? Who, who, who meets the criteria that represents someone who knowingly and willingly abandons God and who knowingly and, uh, and, and willingly abandons the plan that God has for their life? Well, I'm glad to ask the question because I come with the answer. It's the person living in your skin. It's the person wearing your shoes. Yes, the prodigal son is you, the prodigal son is me, the prodigal son is every person under the sound of my voice. Yes, it's us because every one of us knows what it's like to abandon the plan of God because every one of us has strayed outside of God's boundary. Yes. Uh, I, 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 I know you're holy now and I know you're sanctified now, but the truth of the matter is uh, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. What, what, what helps you to, to understand a parable? Num number one, the contents of the parable. Num number two, the characters of the parable. And, and number three, uh, uh, what is strange and unusual about the parable? Uh -huh. Because in every parable, there is something wrong. There's something strange and unusual. Something that just really doesn't make any sense. And Jesus uses parables uh, to make us see God in a way that we've never seen Him before. In parables, we find out, we find God operating in ways that we did not know He operated. Now, 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 now let, me, let me give you three things that I find strange and unusual about this parable and I'll take my seat. Look, look, look at what happens in the text. The young man comes to his father and says, give me my inheritance. The Bible says, and he, he being the father, divided unto him his living. And what I find unusual and strange is that the father didn't try to talk him out of it. He, 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 he didn't try, he tried, didn't try to tell him that he thought that it was a bad idea. He just gave him what his heart was. Now, now mind you, I, I didn't understand this until I looked back at raising the young men that I raised. And what I come to realize is, uh, this father knew this boy. Yeah. That's why he gave it to him, because he knew him. He knew that there were some lessons this boy was not going to learn at home, some lessons that he had to learn out on his own, so he let them go so he could learn the lessons that he needed to make him a better person. Y'all ain't making a connection. Uh -huh. let, 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 me, let me tell it to you like this. Love will let you go oh, yes. so you can grow. Mm. Our God loves us enough to let us go so that we can grow. God will let you go and, and struggle and, and go through trouble to teach you the lessons that you need to learn. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. He, he, 
he'll let you go so that the lessons of the world can straighten you out. Yes. Now, now he'll, he'll try and get it, he'll try to get it to you through his word. Uh -huh. He'll try and teach it through you to the sermon from the preacher. But a lot of people don't get it through scripture. Uh -huh. They don't get it through sermon. Uh -huh. And God loves us too much to allow us to miss the lesson. Uh -huh. So what needs, what, what you can't teach through revelation, he lets you learn through experience. Mm. Let, let, let me do it this way. What you can't learn in Sunday school, uh -huh. you learn in the streets. Right. Uh -huh. what, you, what you can't learn from the pulpit, yeah. you learn from the kid. Yeah. Huh. What you can't learn from eating at mama and daddy's table, uh -huh. you, earn, you learn eating out of the hog trough. Yeah. Oh, bless yeah. you, man. God, God will release you. Yeah. He'll let you go to learn the lessons because sometimes you have to learn the hard way. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody ever learn something the hard way? Yeah. If they don't do it, you are going to be a handicap of hope in this world. Yeah. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. You had to learn the hard way that every smiling face at your friend. Yeah. You had to learn the hard way that you can't have everything you see. Yeah. You had to learn the hard way that all money ain't good money. Yeah. You had to hit the right button to find out that you can't make it without God. The young man, the young man, the young man leaves his, his father, uh, and his father lets him go. But the text says, when the young man was on his way back, the father saw him before he saw the father. 